Airplanes have been painted red throughout aviation history. From the latter part of the 1940s in flight test research to the 1960s, did red paint really make the airplanes go faster? We're going to find out in Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machette. And we have a new feature we're starting this week by request. My special thanks to viewer D. Felice for requesting a uh, episode on color schemes and for suggesting this idea. We do appreciate it. He asked about navy color schemes, why uh, airplanes were blue and white or uh, different shades of blue and gray, uh, why the navy had uh, dark gray, I'm sorry, uh, dark blue airplanes in the 1950s, uh, transitioning to gull gray in the uh, mid 1950s. What was the reason for all these color schemes? Why were trainers painted yellow? even going back to World War II. And then uh, trainers that were painted orange and white. Take a good look at this picture, folks. This is a large scale RC model of a Beechcraft T-34B uh, built by the late Mark Frankel. Stunning model, but a beautiful example of why high visibility color schemes are important, especially for the uh, Naval Air Training Command. You see here the use of uh, the red and white and, and how those two colors interact to create a very high visibility color scheme and a beautiful model. Today, you have the red and white uh, T-45 Goshawk. But let's go back to the beginning. Red airplanes uh, go back to World War I. Uh, the uh, pilot even had the word red in his name, the famed Red Baron uh, flying his Fokker DR-1 triplane. Uh, many famous people had red airplanes. Here's Amelia Earhart's red Lockheed Vega. Chuck Yeager had a red-orange Bell X-1. And here we see what was called the uh, Crimson Test Tube, the Douglas D558-1 Skystreak, seen here with uh, Douglas test pilot Gene May, who was referred to as the flying grandfather because he was flying jets at the ripe old age of uh, <clears throat> 55. But it was later determined that uh, the most visible color for uh, research airplanes was white, uh, as well as uh, having better properties for dissipating heat at uh, high Mach numbers. And here we see the Bell X-2 and its beautiful white color scheme on the lake bed. However, red was uh, used for defining flight test equipment on airplanes. Here we see red pylons and camera pods on the uh, outer wing of the uh, Republic F-105B. And these uh, cameras were used to record uh, weapon separation characteristics during testing at Edwards in the late 1950s. But uh, many bare metal airplanes were uh, augmented with uh, red paint, as you see here on the nose and wingtips of the Hiller X-18. And again, that was to enhance the visibility in flight. So let's take a look at a number of these silver uh, airplanes that had red uh, paint added to them. Here we have a North American F-100 Super Sabre uh, undergoing a ZEL launch, which stood for zero length launch. And this was the use of a solid fuel booster uh, to replace a runway. Uh, this was for NATO in Europe. These airplanes could be uh, theoretically positioned in forests or in bunkers and then just uh, blasted into the air. Uh, it ultimately was never used, but it was a cool looking test airplane. Uh, the Vought uh, Super Crusader, the F8, XF-8U3, uh, world, uh, the fastest single engine Navy jet and uh, a beautiful color scheme with the silver and red. Here we have the North American F-107A, a Mach 2 aircraft from the late 1950s. Uh, this particular airplane used by NASA was the first ever flown with a side stick controller. And this was used for testing the system used in the North American X-15 rocket plane. Here we see a North American F-100 or actually a JF-100C a special modified NASA airplane uh, undergoing uh, inertia coupling studies flown by NASA test pilot Bill Dana. And again, you see the use of the red to uh, really highlight the airplane's position in space and to make it more visible. By the 1980s, the look was a white airplane with red uh, markings. And here we see an F-16B uh, used by the Air Force Test Pilot School. Uh, other uh, schemes for TPS were white airplanes with a red tail, like this AT-37 uh, Cessna Dragonfly that you see here. 
And the motherships that launched the research airplanes had red uh, for a number of reasons. It was easier for the chase pilots to position themselves uh, with the mothership and also for overall visibility from the ground. So here we have the EB-50 Super Fortress carrying the Bell X-2, the NB-52 carrying the X-15. This is painted with red orange and then uh, later they used Dayglow orange. Uh, Dayglow was an interesting phenomenon in the early 60s. It was kind of all the rage with the Air Force. Uh, but the problem was it faded in the bright sun. And where did they do all the testing? Out in the Mojave Desert. So the lifespan of the Dayglo uh, was a bit of a maintenance issue. So here we have all the X planes uh, flown through the uh, late 60s and uh, actually up into the 1980s. And now you see a combination of white airplanes, bare metal, white airplanes with blue uh, stripes, uh, the black X-15, of course, with its special finish for uh, heat dissipation. And uh, so now the, the era of the red uh, airplane was pretty much over. But it's been said that red paint actually made the airplanes fly faster. Uh, this was uh, a phenomenon known as chromokinetic augmentation. This term was uh, uh, discovered by my dear friend, fellow uh, aviation artist and aircraft engineer, Hank Caruso. And chromokinetic augmentation is defined as the interaction of dynamic molecular structure within the color spectrum of red orange, which reduces boundary layer parasitic drag and increases an aircraft's speed. I'll wait while you take your screenshots. And uh, if you believe this, well, I have a bridge in Brooklyn I'd like to sell you. Now I almost got NASA test pilot Joe Engel with this one. We were having dinner and I just kind of lobbed this thing out and had him for about a nanosecond before he burst out laughing, but it was a nice try. Having said that, uh, red color schemes are used to uh, identify different types of, this, of the same uh, test airplane, but different articles. In other words, here we have the first of three uh, JF-105s. Uh, J stands for modified. These airplanes were modified with a uh, camera photo recon nose, although it was never used as a camera ship. But uh, they became dedicated test airplanes at Farmingdale. And JF-1 that you see here on the ramp had a unique color scheme. Each of the three airplanes wound up with a, a special design so they could be differentiated uh, from the ground whether they were in the pattern or, or wherever. Uh, JF-2 uh, is the airplane in the background at right. Uh, and that is uh, buzz number FH-108. JF-1 was 105. Uh, that uh, JF-2 aircraft has not been painted yet. But JF-3, FH-112, had uh, what I think is one of the coolest in-flight uh, flight test aircraft color schemes ever. Uh, it's a little hard to see in black and white, and I was trying to figure out what it was. I could not find a color photo of this airplane, but uh, I noticed that there was this checkerboard pattern uh, along with the uh, sash on the rear fuselage and the uh, chevron on the tail. And uh, looking at this uh, checkerboard, it was like, all right, well, how now what did they do with that? And here was the view that uh, solved the mystery. You can see the checkerboard pattern uh, starting from the sugar scoop air intakes and uh, going all the way to the trailing edge of the wing at the root. And I finally figured it out. And by the way, for you F-105 geeks, I should mention that the uh, flight test airplanes were not fitted with the GCA radar reflector that you saw on the operational aircraft. So that was missing from the nose strut. So what did this airplane look like in color? Well, using a combination of precision measurements and scaling and fudgeometrics, I came up with this drawing. And this is JF3 in all its glory. Uh, would like to do a painting of it someday. But uh, as I said, one of the coolest looking color schemes ever. Well, the 1980s, uh, as I said, the Air Edwards uh, aircraft were white with uh, red trim. And here we see a stunning Tony Landis photo with a 94 Corvette. Uh, this was a cover for Vet Magazine that was shot up there. And uh, there was actually a book written in the 90s uh, uh, called All Corvettes Are Red. And I, that kind of makes a statement. But um, by the 90s, the research aircraft were sporting very interesting custom color schemes with anything but red. This is the X-31, uh, a German uh, aircraft built in cooperation with Rockwell. And this flew at Edwards. And then you had the uh, NF-16D Vista, which was an airborne a flight simulator that could uh, change its flight characteristics uh, digitally and simulate a number of different aircraft for uh, test pilots and eventually student pilots. 
this color scheme was modified into this. And about three years ago, I was uh, commissioned by the test pilot school to uh, redesign the color scheme in uh, collaboration with the 75th anniversary of the school. And it was an interesting project. I wanted to create something distinctive, uh, unique, and uh, yet practical and easy to, to apply for the uh, folks in the paint shop. So my inspiration was this airplane. Now you're probably scratching your head and going, what is an Airbus A319 uh, doing connected in any way, shape or form to a special flight test F-16? And the answer is this is called a retro jet. Uh, there was uh, kind of a uh, all the rage in the, oh, I'd say in the 70s, 80s and 90s to repaint certain airliners in the original color schemes of the airline. So here we have a Trans-Canada A319 painted in the uh, color scheme of the first uh, jet powered airplane for TCA, the uh, Vickers Viscount turboprop. And you can see how that translated into the jet. Well, my source material was gonna be the uh, original F-16 and the white and red scheme. And I wanted to incorporate this into the Vista. So the first thing we had to do was uh, redesign a tail flash uh, that would be unique to the school. They wanted to incorporate the school uh, patch as you see here. And so I tried a couple of different designs. We took the uh, uh, test jet and slide rule uh, and the shock waves and exhaust cone and uh, applied it to the tail. <clears throat> then we surrounded it with a blue field line of flight to the uh, test jet. And then we modified it line of flight to the actual airplane. And this was the final uh, selection. So now that we had our tail flash, I went ahead and uh, uh, proposed the uh, incorporation of the red and white F-16 scheme with the Vista. And then I had an interesting requirement from the uh, paint folks at uh, Hill Air Force Base. The airplane was gonna be painted in the maintenance depot facilities there. And they said that the material used for the radome of the airplane uh, was very difficult to uh, work with in terms of stripping paint and repainting. Was there any way that I could incorporate the existing blue and white design on the radome? So that changed it to this. In addition, the maintenance folks said, is there any way that you could make the entire lower fuselage dark blue? And then that became this look. And so the final scheme uh, as accepted by TPS and approved for uh, the paint folks at Hill was to incorporate the blue and the orange into this. And this became the, the final color scheme for the NF-16D Vista. After the airplane was painted, it had gone from this look to this. And in the air, especially looking up, uh, it had a unique line that had never been used on an F-16 prior to this. And that is the aquatic line of the uh, lower fuselage and the chine that you see here, uh, the really beautiful, graceful curve. It gives the airplane a, a very distinctive look from below. But the best part, and this was one of those uh, happy accidents as Ringo used to describe as drumming. Uh, it's something that just happened uh, as the airplane was finally painted. And that was that the new look of the forward part of the airplane uh, seems to be emerging from the historic look on the tail of the airplane. And uh, so mission accomplished. And I was very proud and very honored to have had the opportunity to create this color scheme. So there you have it, a look at red uh, flight test airplanes from the late 1940s and into the digital age. So did red paint really make these airplanes go faster? No, not really, but they sure look cool. Thank you for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat by request. As always, special thanks to my dear friends from the uh, golden age of Edwards flight test, uh, Tony Landis and Colonel Christian Ledette. Uh, my thanks to the US Air Force Test Pilot School for the opportunity to design a color scheme for the F-16 and the Wings and Air Power Historical Archive. We hope you enjoyed this episode and until next time, take care.